How y'all doing? Having coffee with me today. Collada, who else, who else would you be having coffee with? This is evening for me. I don't know what it is for you. I want you to enjoy this segment. I hope you are all pleased. It sounds like you are all pleased. I'm getting a lot of reviews, and, I've, and I'm very appreciative towards it. Believe me, I am. I didn't realize I was going to be this famous. Wow. I'm just me. I'm human. But thank you anyway. Now let's get started here. Adam, do you got anything you want to ask me today? People, I wanted to clarify this before we get involved. When people call in questions they want to ask me, of course they're directed over to Adam Flowers. Well, Adam reads them, then he calls me, and I, and I answer the questions with my words. So when you hear them questions, that's him talking, but when I'm telling him what to say, I know everything you people ask me because he tells me. Okay, is that clear now? All right, let's get on with this, Adam. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Let's shoot, man. All right. So, hey, everybody, all, I think we're up to 6,150, but by the time oh. you see this video, it's going to be more than that. It'll probably be at 10,000. I, so. I hope so. Oh, man. Thank you, everyone, who's, who's hit the button. Hit the I little... Enough time for you. <laughs> hit, the little, hit the little bell, and that way uh, you get notified when we put up new videos, and check the community tab at the top of the page. We'll be putting updates up there about Frank's DNA, which, by the way, Frank, they gave us an update, Ancestry.com. June 1st, they're going to have the results. June 1st. June 1st. That's when we find out if... Dying to see who belongs to me, who I here. belong to. Colada, colada, grab your favorite brew. Ask a question, he'll answer it for you. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia, the mafia. You better hit the scribe if you know what's good for you. Drinking a cup of coffee with Frank Colada. He'll tell you a lot. Of, he's Frank Colada. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Casino. A lot of people are asking questions about Casino. Okay, this is from Josh. Hi, Frank. Greetings from Ireland. Love the show. I have a question about the movie Casino. There's a scene where you and a crew shoot up a cop's house at night. No, uh, that was pretty crazy. Did it really happen? Well, here's what really happened then. In all reality, we didn't shoot up no cops, cops house. When the cops heard that we, we put a contract out on them, they tried to retaliate. So what they did was two cops jumped in a car. They passed by Tony's house. Tony's brother, Johnny Splacho, lived at the other end of the cul-de-sac. They jumped out of their car and they threw, they emptied a couple of revolvers into Johnny Splacho's house. The two cops said this was in a group of guys. And one of the bullets missed, from what I understand, Johnny's younger brother, I think his name was Johnny too, by about a foot, it went through the wall and everything. And that's what I was told. Well, Tony, why, what do you lie? So it was the cops that did the shooting at the house, not us guys. But Marty put it in his way, Scorsese. So that's clarified, okay? What else? Okay, Charles Alcoser. Hey, Frank, hope all is well, buddy. On the set of Casino, what was Frank Vincent like? Always have heard he was a down-to-earth guy. <laughs> you know, I don't want to sound like I'm knocking Frank, but he falls in that category of a movie star. You know, these guys are made of plastic, and uh, it's all about how he looks, uh, what he does, what he wears, how much money he's getting, what he drives. Who he socializes with on the set, he wouldn't get next to extras. He says that was beneath him. And I said to him, come on. There are people. Without these people, we can't do a movie. He, he, that's just the way he was. Uh, I like Frank Vincent. Don't get me wrong. But uh, he was never going to be the star star of a show. Uh, he, that's it. That's all I want to say about him. Okay, this one's from Kyle2316. Like in the movie Casino, did Tony really have to switch cars several times because of all the tails? Like utilizing underground parking garages and such? Thanks for the answer, Frank. Your videos are great. Well, the real character that used to switch cars wasn't Tony. Tony never drove when he was in Vegas. He always had somebody driving him around. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, Joey Hansen, who was an associate of Tony and our, myself, used to be the one that switched cars. 
Joey lived in L.A., Redonda Beach. And he used to get tails every day. And he used to switch cars in garages. So Marty took Joey's character and placed it into Tony Slacho. Uh, uh, like I said, he never, he, he never drove. He always had one or two guys driving him around. Because he knew if he drove a car, that would give the police good reasons to pull him over and maybe give him a ticket for something and run him and lock him up. He was pretty sharp that way. Never give the police a good excuse to pull you over. That's it. So, Frank, there's a podcast called Talking Sopranos. It's with a couple of the Soprano stars, Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharippa. They mentioned you the other day on their show. And Steve talked about how you guys met. Yeah, I know, Steve. I first met Steve. He was a bouncer at uh, Jubilation, which was two blocks away from where I lived at the time. I owned a condo, Marie Antoinette. So, I, you know, when I wanted to go out and have a drink and see the bras or whatever, or shows, i go walk down the street and have to drive. And Steve spotted me one day. I didn't know this guy from a bowl of chili. And he called me to the front of the line. And he, there was a big line all the time there to get in. And he let me in the door. He said, I know who you are. And he let me in the door. So the next time I went there with Tony, I told Tony, I guess I got a connection at the door, Tony. And I told him about this guy. I didn't even know his name then. He seen me and Tony right in the door. We went. So after that, we became, hello, goodbye, how are you? That's it. I didn't see the guy for years. I never had a conversation with him until I started doing the movie Casino. Now, I'll tell you what happened. As he says in his iPod, I, I, what do they call them things? I, a podcast a or podcast. a vlog, yeah. How, how he bumped into me. I had a suite at the Riviera. We were shooting scenes at the Riviera. I'm walking through the Riviera, and there's this large guy. He's a big man walking towards me. And he's sort of peeking at me, and I could tell. He sort of thinks, I'm thinking, this guy knows me. So as I passed him by, I turned around and looked at him. And he had his hand on his face like this. And I says, you know who you're looking at. And he says, hello, Mr. Claude, how are you? And he says, are you here for the movie? I said, of course I am. He says, man, I'd like to get in the movie. I said, I'll see what I could do for you, Steve. I says, you know, I know Joe Reedy. He's his assistant director at the Marty. I don't know what I could do for you good, but I will try. So I did bring it up to Joe Reedy, and Joe Reedy told me to tell him to go to the casting director, which I did. I can't think of her name, was a she. And uh, they put him in a scene at the bar with a guy, uh, another movie star, where Pesci stabs him with the pen. And uh, that's a scene that I created for Martin Scorsese. So that was Steve Shereppi's, or Shereppa, as, uh, how do you, would you begin to say it? I thought it was his beginning of his stardom. Because from then on, he went on to be as famous as he is. And he did ask me after that, he says, do you think he could get me in any other movies Marty does? And I said, listen, I don't even, you know, I don't want to get involved with that. Steve, I'll drop your name to uh, Joe Reedy, but these people, you know, are you from New York? He said, yeah. I said, then you got opportunity. I said, they don't pick anybody but people from New York, or even although this is a Chicago movie. And then I never heard from him again until I seen him on The Sopranos, or did he did a cookbook, something. Never talked to me again after that. But you know what? God bless you, Steve. Thank you for dropping my name. I hope you do well on your iPod or iCast. You and that kid, what's his name? What's his name, that kid? Uh, his name I like is Michael Imperioli. Go for it, guys. God bless. What else? Okay, this is a long question. I'm going to shorten it. It's from Peter Picconi. Uh, it's about the scene. He's asking about the scene in the movie Casino where Pesci and uh, you are standing by the table playing blackjack and says, hit me again, hit me again. He keeps throwing the card at the guy and says, and you like say, I got it, let's get out of here. And so uh, I got a 10,000 marker. I got it, I got it. He wants to know if that really happened. What's the story? I came out to Vegas uh, for business. I, had, I don't think I was living there at that time. It was close to me moving her. So... Tony and I went out, and he, he said, let's go gambling. So we go to the Riviera. That took place in the Riviera Hotel, because we had control in that hotel, too. And uh, we go in there, and I got about three G on me. Tony's got about 6,000. I don't like to play blackjack. To me, it's a sucker game. 
but he insisted on playing blackjack. So he buys the table. I think there's seven seats. So he puts 100 at each seat, and he's playing blackjack. I don't put nothing down. I'm watching him. So first there's a, a girl dealer, and she's slaughtering him. And he's getting mad, and he's calling her all kinds of names. Well, everybody in the joint knows who he is. And then they, they put this guy. It sort of looked like the guy that was in the movie. And he's on So Tony's calling him names, too. And the guy's trying to get along. And Tony's flipping the cards at him. But he didn't have two picture cards and threw one at him. Because that's, you know, that's 99% you're going to win a hand. He ain't that stupid. You call it a paint. So, uh, and nobody come up to him and told him, you got to stop that. But he looked at me and he says, it's because of you I'm losing 6000 So I'm not fucking twisting your arm. I told you I don't trust this game. It's a sucker game. No, it's 6000 I said, get the fuck out of here. So that's when we walked out of here. That's what really happened, and it happened at the Riviera. Marty took that scene and made it look like it happened at the at the Stardust. Tony got too much brains for that to happen at the Stardust then. It's controlled. He controlled it. But that's another scene. They made it look like it was for real. That answer your question? Hey. Quick side note about that, Frank. Yeah. It, it, the dealer in that scene is the same guy from the same dealer in the movie uh, Rain Man. Yeah. yeah, when Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise are playing blackjack at the table. Yeah, he's the same dealer. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. He was a real dealer. He looks like Law. I know it's that guy. I can't think of his name. Peter Lorre. <laughs> Peter Lorre, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, Brooks Wade, Silver Stacking 101, um, Mustaf Alik. They're all asking the same question. How accurate was the portrayal of Tony in the movie Casino? You know, Tony uh, Pesci played a, a very fairly good part of Tony. The height, the makeup, the hair. The only problem is what he didn't do right. He swore a lot. Now, I mean, everybody swears. But I think they counted the, nine, the times he used the word fuck. I think it was 350 sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't swear that much in real life. Uh, but Pesci, I guess that's part of Hollywood, and he put it in there. Uh, he was a generous man. Tony was a generous man with people. But if he told you, I'll give you a thousand, you better s spend it the way he told you to spend it. If you owed money, pay it. Pay the people or whatever it was. Don't go back and gamble with it. Like that scene you've seen in the movie where he gave the guy 900 and Al Alfred, and then he went and gambled it. Well. That happened, you know, Tony gave the guy a couple slaps uh, and he did give him another 900 and the guy did pay his bill. But he was very generous. Another thing Tony was generous on, if we went out for dinner, most wise guys, bosses, do not pick up the checks. They have their underlings pick up the checks. It just happens. Uh, Tony used to pick up the dinner check all the time. Many times I tried. And no, 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 leave it alone. I got it. Sometimes I don't know, but he had the owner on the muscle. <laughs> so the owner of the restaurant was paying it. So he did us all a favor. And that was, that's that.